I was uh, thinking when I looked at the audience, um, it is strange to see that there are, I was counting the numbers now, there's an increase as about six of us here now, parliamentarians. Seven. Six to seven. Seven. Seven? Yes, and increasing. Honorable Anand Kumar Siri, though he's not here in person, he's here in spirit, right? So if you add a few more, the numbers are big. I just calculated it, uh, 225 members, that's a little over uh, almost 3% of the total parliament uh, representation. If you get 5%, my God, that's great. That's a huge number, right? Because that's how difficult it is to get parliamentarians, not for an evaluation meeting. Even if the Prime Minister calls them for some huge committee meeting, you might get 5%, right? So that's the challenge. So I think this is a great turnout. But the strange thing is, what I can't understand is, all these guys are from the wrong side of the house. <laughs> these are all government members. Evaluation must be a tool that is being propagated by the opposition more than the government. Because evaluation is a tool that is needed for transparency and accountability for delivery to your people. So I, I'm confused, where is the opposition? They should be here more, so we need to interact with them and say, hey guys, this is not our job. This is what you should be doing. Because I did this when I was in the opposition. I felt that evaluation is something, monitoring and evaluation as a tool is essential for a country, for especially politicians. Unfortunately, People look at evaluation as a kind of uh, a tool that is used to audit them, to audit their activities. Sometimes ministers think that evaluation uh, is something that can infringe on their uh, privacy and sometimes they get into difficulties. And usually when you're in government, you don't like to use evaluation because you think that your you'll, evaluators will come and look at, find out details about all the things that you're not doing right. So I'm trying to be as sim simple as possible. What I'm trying to say is evaluation is something that is very important for us, for politicians, for a country. And that is why we formed the Global Parliamentary Forum for Evaluation. Mama Basa Dekemma Katakaranwanam Man Kyaname. Uh, again, Kirima. Uh, monitoring and evaluation Kiana Yantra Nea, Desha Palak Nata, Hari Vadaga. Mama Ekapatha King Kiana, Api, Desha Palak Nu Hadia, Ape Kalia, Meten, the Yomukirima, Apit Hari Amari, Adamangitani, Boho the Nek, Loku Kapoima Kerla, Meten Tavil Lati, Samarita Hita, making Mamukada Ganikia. I would make a Vatinakama at Tashema Vishalai. For example, if we build a school, say there is a school coming up in Honorable Mayanta Disanayaka's electorate. So he's now pushing to get the school done. So the school comes up. Langama Pasal, Honorable Pasal. So they pump in, you have five. 25. 25. So they're pumping in, say, 50 million bucks, right? Each. So that's about uh, a huge amount. But the school comes up. There's a big building, right? There are so many big. Uh, classrooms built, but has his electorate really been happy? He will do a political sell, the buildings are there. Are they really happy? He wouldn't be able to measure whether he has achieved the targets in making his electorate happy. How would you do that? Only if you have an evaluation process in place would you know whether you're happy, right? The physically, the activities and processes will take place. Buildings will come up. Engineers will come, they'll work, they'll put the desks and chairs. Everything will happen. But in the end, how do you measure? You would measure it by seeing how the level of education in your area has improved after the school was enhanced. Whether the number of people who are passing maths and English at the O levels has increased by, in, by investing in this school. Because if they haven't got the necessary teachers, 
and given the resources for the school and if the children, your electorate, if your children did not pass in maths and English, the parents won't be happy with your school. They'll think Mayanta has not delivered. But you think you put up a big school and everybody should be happy. Because without maths and English, you can't get a job in a government department. I have experienced these days. Trying to give jobs to people, they're asking for crazy qualifications. You want to be a driver, you need to have a credit in maths. I don't know what the hell that has to do with driving, but that's how governments work. Right? So you need to get your people tooled. So how would you know that? If you do an evaluation, and evaluators look at performance targets and goals. Eventually, whether the levels of education have gone up, whether they are getting into universities better, then your electorate is happy. So just building a school is not going to get you to win elections. Same with the hospital. You might have a hospital in your electorate, but if they don't have the proper staffing, the equipment, then the service delivery is not there, people are not happy. I remember in the last 10 years in my district during the previous government, in every village they went and put up a health center. Saukya Madhya Astanya. Hemma Tanama Gehua Pauya Anve. Mage district ke petao gehua ke Saukya Madhya Astanya Tipuna. Namut, eka hedi ekpat pat karena, eka vaidya vare ekpat pat karena. Gamunda yanda be oke wal. Vadila dange godanagili nikam vahila timuni. They were working with Akunene because nobody evaluated the projects. Right? It was a waste of money. Now you go up at a higher level. Money is limited, especially for developing countries. In the world over, concessionary finance is a thing of the past. We are a middle income country. We don't get free money now. We don't get concessionary funding. We have to borrow at commercial rates. That's the reality. Every cent that we take, don't think all these highways are coming up for free. They come with a, a huge price tag. And we have to pay it back. Now, how many projects are really useful for this country? Could it have not been invested elsewhere? I'll just give you one example. If you evaluate the highway from Matara to Hamban Tota, if you do an evaluation on the amount of money we have borrowed to do that extension and see the amount of traffic for the next 20 years, that highway won't be used if effectively or efficiently. The investment wouldn't be worth it. The ROI will be very poor. That money could have been invested elsewhere, perhaps Colombo Candy, which is more populated. We need a highway faster. That money should have been pumped in there. Or we should have built more schools. Or we could have used that money for something else. That's about, that's what evaluation is about. When you're in parliament and on your feet, if you have evaluation reports with you, you can effectively be a good parliamentarian and raise the proper questions. Now I'm coming to how it will affect, we help you in your politics. Then when you ask the right questions, and when it is in the media that such and such a member of parliament has asked these relevant questions, why this investment was made, is there an ROI on this, the return on investment, is it worthwhile? Are the people going to benefit? And he comes up with the evaluation reports and says the reports say otherwise. Then people begin to think, ah, this parliamentarian is talking about us. He, he knows about us. He feels for us. That's where you get your votes. People think you're representing them. So you can see how important this tool is. Now coming to the reality of it. Mr. Sivanana Sodhi will, I think, agree with me, these evaluators, uh, in a sense, I wear two caps sometimes, evaluators come up with huge evaluation reports. It's about this thick, 240 pages. Can we read a report like that? No way. As a parliamentarian, even in the opposition, I would say a politician would have in a day maximum 10 minutes to do his reading from the newspaper included, because you're so busy. You have phone calls coming, you have people's demands, you have to attend committee meetings. Now you're in government, it becomes worse, right? So 10 minutes a day of reading, you can't read a 240 page complicated, sophisticated, uh, technical report on evaluation, that doesn't work. That is why we formed the Global Parliamentary Forum for Evaluation. We feel it's our right to be strengthened in our knowledge of evaluation. There is a huge gap. One of the institutions that, which is very weak in evaluation is parliament. 
And if you look at our structure, the Auditor General, what does he do? He does accounts, he just does financial accounting and he's, all his reports are about the accounting practice. He doesn't do any proper evaluation of any government institution because he himself doesn't have the resources. There are no specialists in his department who are evaluators. So, we've started talking about setting up, strengthening parliament, strengthening parliamentarians with the knowledge in evaluation to train us. पार्लिमेंटेशर अपने वार्ता वाल देनों कोटा पिटू देसिया हथलिया का वार्ता वक्त दीला बैठा अपने ये पिटू देसिया हथलिया का वार्ता वो पिटू है कटा संक्षिप्त वार्ता वक्त बावड़ हदर दूर ना मत एक ऐति ऐति आप अपने पार्लिमेंट तो सभाव तुला व्याप्रति या कारगने व्याप्रति ऐतिया ना बाटीना कम गया ना खता so that is why we formed the Global Parliamentary Forum. When we started it in Nepal, there were only three of us. One of them, I remember, came on a push bicycle for the meeting, he was an opposition member. Today he's a minister in the government of Nepal. I was an opposition member. The other gentleman from Bangladesh was an opposition member. Today he's a deputy state minister of finance, very powerful. Uh, all three of us became ministers. But we took the fight when we were in the opposition. Then we grew the numbers. When we used to go to uh, evaluation conclaves and conferences, we were always in the minority. We had two parliamentarians, three parliamentarians, and the evaluators used to look at us in, in, you know, as, as if we were kind of some strange creatures. Now, when we go to conferences, we have larger numbers. In Africa, we have a, a parliamentary uh, forum for evaluation. In Latin America, we have a group. In the MENA region, in Middle East, we have a group. In South Asia, we have our group. And in Sri Lanka, we have now strengthened our forum. We have people uh, like Anand Kumarasiri, Tilakaraja, taking the lead in this. Uh, they've attended conferences across the world, spoken at these conferences as parliamentarians. We can be proud. What is our main uh, focus? Our focus is that evaluation, मैं अगर इम करने वाला पीले वेल है, मैं के मैं का अनिवार्य खिलवे ना तब मैं का क्रियात्मक कराने बे अंडर सी मेक इट मैंडेटरी, सो देवरफॉर वी डिसाइडेड दैट वी शुड पुश फॉर अ नेशनल इवैल्यूएशन पॉलिसी, इन एवरी कंट्री इवैल्यूएशन हैज बिकम एस्टेब्लिश्ड एंड इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज्ड in most countries, there was a minister, a prime minister, a president who took it forward. In 2002, Honorable Ranil Vikramasinghe, then prime minister also, was the champion. He pushed for a national evaluation policy. In 2004, we went out of government. It was shelved up to today. Last year, Honorable Buddhika Patirana, one of our parliamentarians, uh, put forward a private member's motion asking to establish a national evaluation policy in Sri Lanka. A draft policy is ready. It's with the Ministry of Planning and Economic Affairs now. It's ready for presentation. We might soon see it in Parliament as a piece of legislation and we will have a national evaluation policy. Once we have it, every institution in this country is, is it's made compulsory to have evaluation as a system within its uh, whole uh, institution. So that's, it becomes mandatory. And funding is made available for training to have resource people. And we're also demanding that parliamentarians also should have uh, training in evaluation. Other thing is that as parliamentarians, what can we do? Now, today, see, we, we, we are trying to get people together. Now, we have representatives of the uh, Ms. Chandima is the chairperson of the Sri Lanka Evaluation Association. They are a voluntary organization promoting evaluation. They are the national organization in Sri Lanka. They go all over the world, 
representing Sri Lanka at evaluation conferences. They also have workshops uh, and conferences in Sri Lanka. Now, we can be a conduit between the government and the evaluation community, the parliamentarians. And I think that we need to build that relationship, that we need to have training and we need to have interaction with you all, not only at these big conferences, but at informal levels. We need to have a meeting every month, discussion, where what, what we need to take up in parliament, how you can strengthen our capacities. So for capacity building, you all become, the whole base becomes a critical unit. Then the most important thing, uh, the sustainable development goals, which is the UN in 2015 brought forward the sustainable development goals. In 2030, we are hoping to have achieve the 17 sustainable development goals, 169 uh, uh, targets, so a huge way to go. And the important thing in the world over is that when you talk about sustainable development goals, we are talking about uh, a new concept of evaluation. We talk about evaluation which is equity focused and gender responsive. If you look at the uh, data in the world over, if you see two thirds of the extremely poor people in the world are from low income countries and middle income countries. And most of them in these two thirds have an ethnic minority as the head of the household. Three fourths of the extremely poor people in the world, three fourths of the most poor in the world live in rural areas. Then 80% of people with disabilities are from developing countries and they are poor. And if you look at more statistics, in developing countries, 35 million girls do not go to school. These are frightening statistics. And you talk about uh, high growth, economic growth, you talk about 8%, a huge per capita income, but that doesn't reveal the real truth. So if you really represent the people, then this is what you need to look at. If you're talking about SDGs, SDGs are talking about inclusivity, no one left behind, to make sure that everybody is included in the development process, whether you're black or white, or whether you're rich or poor, whether you're uh, with a disability or not, you have a right to be part of the growth process. So now, if we are going to achieve the sustainable development go goals target in Sri Lanka, which has become mandatory now, part of our program, we as parliamentarians have to have know about evaluation as a tool. Only if we know what evaluation is and how it can be used, because the evaluation framework will make sure that it gives you the data on whether we are achieving those goals, how far we are moving. So what we think is that we need to educate ourselves. We need to come together as a group and we should be proud as Sri Lankan parliamentarians to go to any forum and to talk about evaluation, talk about SDGs and say we know what we are talking about. This tool is important, right? So we need to promote this tool. And therefore, I think my uh, main purpose was today to tell you I am the chairman of the Global Parliamentary Forum for Evaluation. Um, it's a great honor for a Sri Lankan to hold this position and that's why I said uh, having a few parliamentarians, 3% of our total is a huge achievement. If you got 1%, I would have said, yeah, we've still won the battle because getting people involved is not easy, but that's how it grows. When we started it, um, my friend Asela and I used to organize the uh, panel discussions at uh, different conferences, and when we used to go for the panels, usually when we invite uh, members to come to our panel, he and I used to be seated at the head table, we would have one person in the audience. Right? We had more people at the head table than in the audience. That was the real truth. Nobody wanted to listen to us. They thought this was a joke. But today the UN is talking about the Global Parliament Forum. We are supported by UN Women. We are supported by EVAL Partners. We are supported by UNIC and we make ourselves felt. I've spoken in New York at the UN, I've spoken in different parts of the world at top level conferences, and the Global Parliamentary Forum is a force to reckon with. So you're part of it, and I think we should, this is your seat.
civic responsibility, your national responsibility. And I think we should all play a role. So I wouldn't uh, go any further. I'd like to thank ICTA for this support. You've done a great job. Uh, we thank you for uh, being involved with us. I'd like to thank SLEVA, uh, the other organizations, Piroshini, uh, Isha, the, the other uh, voluntary members who've been working with us, and Asaila, of course, always being coordinating the tough part of this job. And most of all, I'd like to ask, uh, thank Natalia, who's here with us, a very busy lady who's been uh, a great support at every forum, working for promoting evaluation across the world. She's uh, ex-president of IOC. She's a wonderful person, and I think we can learn a lot. So we, we are very happy that she's in Sri Lanka with us. We are taking this down to the districts. For you all to know, right now there's a program that at district level we are training our district uh, uh, officials on evaluation. I have volunteered. We had one program in Monragala and, and then in Matara, and I hope the next one will be in my own district in Kegol. Because, yeah, candy, uh, we'll give you candy once you're committed. Yes, so next, uh, my Honorable Mayanta is saying he would like candy. So after Kegol, candy. <laughs> right, good. So that's, that's, how about Matale and Matale after that, right? Putla. Yeah, and Putla. Okay. So, uh, so we, this culture, if we move the culture down and if officials also get into this trend, I think we can change the way Sri Lanka is thinking. Um, uh, thank you everybody for giving me this opportunity to be here today. I'm very happy and we will take the fight to the end. Thank you.